I don't think you can have a great area in health. That's where we got a problem. Because if you get it right, you survive. And if you get it wrong, you die. What are you saying, gang? Listen, I'm Chucky Online. This is my chargey poet, my Don Lippy. Welcome to the elephant in the room. The guest is somewhere in the building watching us have the conversation. If they decide they want to come and join the conversation, the lights will then turn red. And that means that something's going to be talked about. As soon as the light turns green, that means we'll wrap up and we'll kind of leave it to you in the comments and you can discuss whatever you want to discuss. Welcome to the elephant in the room. And I want to just talk a little bit on just how we feel about this whole thing. And I'm going to start it off by saying, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm just skeptical about everything. I'm skeptical. There's, we've been given certain information on certain things that have been happening or whatever. And it's like, yeah, you might see certain things, but is it as big of a deal as they're making it? When I was 15, I went to the shop. Before I went to the shop, one boy told me, listen, don't come out your yard. If you come out your yard, I'm on you, fam. I was like, whatever. I went to the shop, I got a big punch in my mouth. I've left my house plenty of times and COVID hasn't touched yeah, yeah, yeah. me. So that boy, that punched him up when I was 15, is more dangerous than COVID to me. Yeah, yeah. This, I, is, I, this, this is how I feel. I hear that. And do you know what it is as well? Yeah, I think for some of us as well, for some of us, because obviously this is not about, I don't want to be insensitive to anyone who may feel like they have lost people within it or whatnot. But something that was a big thing for me, yeah, was like, we, there was a time where we started protesting and there was conversations that were being had on something different, do you get what I'm saying? Things that were going on within our community. Yeah. So for me now, when we're told to stay in our yard and social distance and do all these type of things, if now thousands of people are out on road, I'm saying to myself, well, you know what, Well, in two weeks time, enough people are gonna drop yeah. dead now. Yeah, yeah. Do you well, know at least what I'm get saying? it, at, at least, least get yeah. the thing. And it didn't feel didn't like, didn't if happen. I'm being honest, it didn't feel like there was so much of a thing like that. I can't even go and have a family gathering now purely because of something that is apparently so, so bad that it can kill so much of us, but we're still, like you said, marching in March and April. It's a tough balance between, you know, seeing people you love, your friends and family, and, you know, potentially, uh, well, stopping the spread of a potentially lethal disease. Do you feel like there's an element of scaremongering going on? Yeah, I, I do. I do. I do think a so bit of trying to control, man, and you get me all these new sets of rules and everything. Man, I've been a lawbreaker from early, you mm. get me? I didn't really, it's in me. Even these rules, I didn't really follow all of them. But at first, when I did, Allegedly. when I did follow them, it's because I was scared, bro. Mm. You get me? I think, man, I'm a bad man, I don't care about, <laughs> I can't go out there. But when I'm thinking, if there's virus out there, I ain't going out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? It's like my man at the shop, so I ain't going out there. Yeah, bro. My mom was rootless as well. I'm saying, the social distance thing I find is quite interesting still because, so, so, in China, yeah. they were saying that you had to keep a one metre distance. South Korea was 1.4. Australia, Belgium, Germany, Greece, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal and Spain was 1.5. US, 1.8. Canada and UK, um, two metres. Yeah, there was a lot of cons consistencies between countries. That was uh, really up to the government and the uh, public health uh, departments to decide what the uh, social distancing rule was. I don't understand if this thing is what it is, why is it different in different places? Yeah. And that's the reasons why I say I may not be an expert, but I know what I know. If something is meant to be so dangerous of you that there's certain guidelines that you need to follow, usually in medicine, they're non-negotiables. Mm. If you've got to take cowpo twice a day for a week in order for you to get better, you've got to take cowpo twice a day for a week to get better. With this situation here, depending on what country you're governed in, they are telling you how to deal with the virus. Sometimes, for me, it feels like they're just winging it. That's what it yeah. feels like. There's like an element of like, we don't really know. And like, the thing is, would it be better for them to say that? Let's just say that was the case. Let's say they didn't know, really. Would it be easier for them to just come out and say, you know what? We don't even know what we really need to do. That. But I'll... we're, we're going to try a thing and we're going to try some things. Do you get me? You know what it is, yeah? If they come on a, you know what, better safe than sorry, this thing's a mad thing, everyone just stay in the yard. You understand? There was, 
At least with that, it's like, all right, cool, innit? I'm going to chill while man are trying to figure out what's going on. Innit? But it's like, every time man's giving information, like you said, it's, it's kind of inconsistent, you understand? Yeah. Even when it comes to like all the numbers and the statistics, it's like nothing's clear, you understand? And I kind of thought if something this serious was to happen, man would at least wait to get their facts right, to right. broadcast certain information. I mean, there's tons of things that we could speak about, but again, we know what we know. And I know from my understanding of looking at my parents, uh-oh, someone's coming. I'm really, really confused. It says here, you know, I'm black, you're black, you're black. It says here, black people are 1.9 times as likely to die as white people. So what is that saying right there? We, we're, we're more likely to die. But this man doing this walk right here, oh, wow. should be able oh, to confirm wow. everything. Yes. Thank yes, you yes. so much for the Thank elephant. You, yeah, Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, you come too serious though. Yeah. Yeah, no games, like. firstly, your uh, name? Shko. All right, okay, cool. Um, and could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm a doctor in the NHS um, and I've worked with COVID patients, I've seen them. Um, and yeah, I've been listening to your boys backstage. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've picked up on quite a few things. You guys have said some really interesting points. I was gonna say, you were talking about, uh, you know, the amount of uh, ethnic minorities or black people that, have, that are more likely to get COVID. Um, I know people who are black who have had COVID and unfortunately have passed away from it. Um, it does affect ethnic minorities and uh, black people a bit more. Um, they're, still, they're still looking into why that happens, um, whether that's because ethnic minorities are in jobs or in areas where they're more exposed to people. Uh, let's say, you know, in the NHS, you have people, you know, you have ethnic minorities working on the front line. You have a lot of them in A&E, in &E, on the wards. Um, and a lot of them are from uh, South, Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia um, from areas in Africa as well. So they're going to be they're going to be more exposed when they're seeing patients come straight straight into the A and E department who are really sick. Okay, oh, so let's just stop you there because I don't want to sort of like just brush over that. Do I expect a doctor to see someone die? Yeah, a doctor. Mm. Do I expect to see a black person die if it's this bad? Yeah, I'm black. I'm around black people, but probably more than yourself. So the fact that you've seen someone that's the black that dies, you're a doctor, that makes sense. I'm more concerned with why this isn't fear mongering because I don't know anyone. Like my mum's black, my dad's black, my neighbours are black, my cousins are black, my black. You mean not one person? There's, do you know how many marches there have been? Do you know how many times we've yeah, yeah, covered together? Yeah. So to me, COVID sounds like something that can be extremely bad, but then you show me one thing in life that cannot be extremely bad. And just on the point, just to make yeah. on top of that, yeah, because I have heard of somebody whose parent had died through COVID and stuff like that. Like, how do we even know? Because there's like so many different things that people die from. You always hear these things of like, okay, this person died of whatever, but then they might just be quick to make the statistic of saying, well, yeah, they died of COVID, but really, like, did they? Yeah, so yeah. I, I see your point. So when, when they do the statistics, they talk about COVID-related deaths, don't they? So they, say, so they say the patient may have had COVID, but then died, died of something else. Because you don't really just die of a virus itself. You know, some, someone, will, someone may die of kidney failure. They might die of a heart attack. But obviously, having the virus will predispose you to being quite unwell to get to that point. So like on their death certificate, for example, it may be written that they've, got, they've had something uh, they died of something, let's say a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, so a heart attack, and then they will write on there that they also had COVID and they feel COVID may have predisposed them. So COVID may have caused that to happen. But What's your question? Sorry. Is that, is that the equivalent of saying, so I jumped on the bus, I was on my way to Wood Green, I got off at like West Green Road yeah. and I said, let me go for a walk. Then my dad saw me and goes, jump in. And then he dropped me to Wood Green. Now, he eventually took me to Wood Green, but I was going Wood Green all the time. Is that what you're basically saying with this situation here? Because it's, it's really confusing to me, like, because if someone, no disrespect to them, is literally in the last remaining, because I can be real honest now, and I can tell you my dad's got cancer, and it's not looking good. And I've been to the house on several occasions. My brother's been to the house on several occasions. My family have been to the house on several occasions. And my dad is still waiting to watch Arsenal versus Manchester City this, this Saturday. If it was bad as we're saying, I don't understand why he's still here. But then if, and if COVID, if then he gets COVID and he dies, really, I mean, they'll put that the COVID killed him, yeah. but really it was the cancer that was... I, I get to bear witness 
to how difficult it is to deal with an individual going through that type of stuff is not easy. So if someone came along and said, boy, it was the, it was the COVID, I'd be like, bro, oh, hell no. Donnie had this way before COVID was even a thing. Isn't that fear mongering to everybody else? I don't want to put on a tin foil hat here, yeah, and be one of them, man, innit? Yeah, yeah. And insensitive. But let's not act like we don't know whoever they are try to put little things in society to kind of like control people. And I don't necessarily think that, so don't let me down, yeah. Boris Johnson, any other people, them. But a lot of people, they, they, they think that. Should we be as scared as everyone suggested? Yeah, we should, because this, this virus is something we haven't come across before. It's only been around a few months. And then we're seeing people who get it rapidly deteriorate in their condition when they get it, and then they pass away. You know, we're having people who are like 20 years old, um, who end up on a ventilator in, in ITU. Um, but then we also have people who are like 50 or 60 who just get off with mild symptoms. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that's so sporad so like random with regards to uh, if somebody will just pass off with mild symptoms or someone will just get, will get really sick. In, in society, like, I wouldn't want to be in government. Like I wouldn't want to be trying to make these rules because you'd have to balance um, society going moving forward, society going mm -hmm. and people's health. You know, how, how are you going to balance it? Are we just going to suddenly just all stay indoors? Like, where am I supposed to go? Am I supposed to, I can't treat people if I'm in, in my house, but I have to go, I have to go to the hospital. If I go to the hospital, am I not allowed to go to the supermarket? But then how do we move forward? As, cause the, well, that's the, what I mean, no one knows the answer to that. So no, then why no do we shut really everything knows. down? Because this is what's so crazy. We don't know anything. So everybody, stop what you're doing. Yeah. Have we never come across in your whole time doing doctrine, something that you didn't know the answers to and you had to pause, this is the first time? No, no, there are always times in medicine that you... So, you how, so why, do we, why are we stopping now? Because yeah. I understand it's bad, but it's still... I don't think it's as bad as you're saying. I know as a doctor, you see a 20-year-old with COVID and you go, wow, you, there's an emotional attachment mm. to that that I can't quite comprehend. I'm not a doctor and I know that you're exposed to that environment, mm. so it makes you go, nah, my bro. But I'm exposed to loads of 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds within this job and yeah. just in society who... Are, there's nothing wrong with them in any yeah. capacity. So I'm seeing more 20 year olds and so on and so forth being safe in opposed to the people that you are seeing and, I'm, and not to neglect them, but I just want to know, there must be something where you go, if you have it under these circumstances, it could be a problem for you. And if you have it under those, you're calm, surely. Yeah, but with that poet, like you've got, you've got to look at people individually. Like, you know, yeah. if, if one person has it and they pass away, that's really important because yeah, that, yeah. that, that's someone's brother, that's someone's, it's true, that's someone's true. nephew, that's someone's dad. Like, we, we can't say, oh, we're just, don't worry, it's only going to be one person, it will pass on. Like, we need to take this as seriously oh. as possible. We still don't know much about this virus. Like, we've, we just recently, it's been, we, we've heard people got reinfected with it. Mm -hmm. they've, they've, they had it initially, cleared, and then they got reinfected. So I'm thinking, fair enough, a 20 year old with mild symptoms got by got by fine but then if they get reinfected are they going to get end up on itu and then that could be one of us in him in this room question actually to all of you um do you feel like the problems off the back of covid is more dangerous than the actual problems itself so the problems that is actually causing people with you know isolation and depression yeah. and even when we were talking about the scaremongering and stuff like that could that not be seen as more dangerous than the actual thing itself? And that's what they're talking about. They're like, it's a real tough balance between letting society carry on, move forward, the economy going, and people's physical health. Because if you're having a situation where people are, you're confining people to their home, saying you're not allowed out, um, people's mental health will deteriorate, uh, people feel more isolated, and then you're gonna have more problems down the line. But then if you get them out, people are going to get infected with COVID and then get, get sick a bit quicker. But then no one's going to know the answer to this. This is a very no, it is, hard, yeah. Can I just say one a thing, very though? hard thing to balance. I don't want to move ignorant to what's happening in actual reality. Yeah. I am fully aware of the things that we should be doing, but if we move ignorant to what's happening, mm. that's when we're having a conversation that doesn't actually exist. So with the, with the restrictions that have been put in place, we can't just pretend everyone's listening to them. They haven't. I understand where you're coming from. We have to take precautions because it could potentially affect people. But in actual reality, not a lot of people have taken those precautions. And I think, my ignorance again, I don't think it's been as detrimental as people supposedly thought it would be on the nation. So therefore, maybe, just maybe, 
how we're treating the situation in comparison to what the situation is doesn't make sense. Then you look at Chucky's um, point. Now, even if you don't get COVID, there's a possibility you might still get some type of problem. It could be due to isolation. It could be due to the fact you can't see your children. It could wow. be due to the fact that work. It could, so it doesn't even matter. Under these circumstances as it stands, yeah. you're getting ill, whether it's mentally or whether it's due to COVID. Yeah. I want to know why the hell that they can't, for some strange reason, find a way where we don't affect so much people. Because as it stands, COVID's not going to be our biggest problem come 2021. No, no, Mental no, illness might be a problem. Flipping domestic violence agree. might be a problem. Um, separation and divorce might be a problem and then there's no way for you to monitor that you can't go into a man's mind and say what's he thinking you got to try and figure that out I think that's a bigger problem problem is we never experienced this really as a as a world as a society something like this before we wouldn't we don't we still don't know what the way forward is um, then are we trying are we using humans as guinea pigs then well we, we are our own guinea pigs we, we have no idea what, what, what the best what the best way to move forward we're just trying to balance getting people to, to carry on as best as they can and people to stay at home. If you look all across the world, each government is, a, is attacking this a different way. And everyone's looking at each other's way to see, fair enough, we're all young here, you know, we're focusing on the young people. If I give it to an older person, older people are more likely to mix with older people. The moment the older, pe older population get it, that's what we're worried about, that they'll start spreading it to other, to other older people and they'll get it and they're more likely to die. They're more likely to get the more severe form of COVID as opposed to us here in the room. And that's what we're concerned about. Initially, ah. after, after lockdown, you started looking at the statistics, the most people getting these swab tests positive were young people. So the ones less than about 35. Those are the people that had it. And people were like, oh, do you know what? It's mild symptoms. Don't worry about it. Um, but the problem is, is if, tho if those numbers on the graph start jumping up to the bigger age groups, then we're going to have a problem because Right now, hospitals have been trying to get back to normal, back to pre-COVID times. If you're in a situation where you, the hospitals are just full of old, older people with COVID, um, you can't really run an efficient hospital because it's just going to be a COVID hospital. That's what we're really worried about, and the hospitals are going to get overwhelmed. Well, not, they all, are they all guaranteed to pass away because of it? You're more likely to if you're so older you're not with comorbidity. But nothing's guaranteed in the way. Do you think some of the advice that the government is giving out could have made things worse, possibly, like what we've just spoken about. And do, and do, actually, just off that, the reason mm. why you could say that is maybe because, remember, they did the, what was it, the help, the eat out to help out thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah loads and of, then, so yeah. we all went out and ate, and then all of a sudden, when we all went out and ate to help out, oh then my all gosh, of a sudden, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it yeah, so they talked about that, didn't they? They said there may have been a contribution to uh, the COVID cases from all the eat out to help out business going on. But that have been common summer. sense, though. When they're being common sense. Yeah, but then you have to remember, so this 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 goes back to our point earlier, like none of us here would want to be on the government board at the moment because you have to balance economy and society with people's health. You you know, there are a lot of people out there who rely on working in the hospitality sector, a lot of people that work in bars and restaurants, you know. Um, and this goes back, uh, this goes back to your point, Chucky, when you were saying the long-term effects of people's mental health, social isolation. If you're getting the people in the hospitality sector and telling them, look, we're going to carry on closing uh, the restaurants and bars, you're not going to have a job, and then they're at home without, without any sort of income, then later on you're going to have these complications of mental health problems, uh, uh, what's it called, social isolation, anxiety at home and people who are much less off because of it. I think it's calm to have a great area in football. I think it's calm to have a great area in music. It's calm to have a great area in loads of different artistic perspectives. I don't think you can have a great area in health. That's where we got a problem. Because if you get it right, you survive. And if you get it wrong, you die. What does this time next year look like if you still don't know what COVID-19 is and we still have to go with all of the other effects of something that we have to deal with in COVID-19. What does a year in this situation going forward look like for you and your profession? If what the governments have been saying is correct and we need to follow these guidelines to reduce the number of cases, maybe in a year's time we may have less cases. It's really hard to say. I, Do you, you think know, there'll I, be a vaccine? Vaccines are a completely different topic, Poet, because the problem is with, uh, with vaccines is there are so many viruses out there that we don't have, have vaccines for. HIV is a very obvious 
case. We don't have a vaccine for HIV. But we've never Come stopped the whole world for HIV. By the way, there's a green light. No, I've got, I know, hey, yo, sorry. there's a green light, cuz. Yeah, hey, we thought we spoke about this. Huh? No, we, we didn't. <laughs> Sorry, green light, but I'm still going. How about that? <laughs> no, because you know what it is, yeah? Let's be honest, innit? There's a lot of things in the world that have killed other people that haven't killed anyone that... Yeah, yeah, this is, to, this is to defend you, innit? There's a lot of things in the world that have killed people that haven't killed anyone that we know. Have you stopped the world for it? Yeah, but it's not about that. But no, but no, no. But the difference between COVID and those things is that that spreads, you understand? People fall off mountains, you understand that? Like, I don't know anyone that's fall off a mountain. If my brethren tell me that his, his dad fell off a mountain, I can't say you're lying. We can't predict what's gonna happen in a year's time, okay? Um, we can only go by what we, what our statistical and mathematical models go by with regards to how this virus spreads and uh, what it's gonna do to society. Uh, with regards to vaccines, I don't know if there will be a vaccine. No one can guarantee that at all. There's not a vaccine at all for any coronavirus out there that's successful. This is a, COVID-19 is a coronavirus. We don't actually have a successful vaccine for any coronaviruses and coronaviruses have been around for years that we know. Right. So, you know, it's really hard to say where we are gonna be in a year's time. But I get your point, Poet, if we, if, if we do lock down society, we are probably gonna have more problems in a year's time. And that is very true. We are seeing more domestic violence cases with people in isolation. We are seeing people um, separating. We are seeing a lot of mental health problems. But unfortunately, this is the reality of this virus. We've never had this issue before in, in our society. And it's something that we're just gonna have to keep looking on like a day-to-day -day basis, looking at it regularly and seeing what measures we can do. It's a fine balance. Right. Bro, thank you for coming and sitting with us and, and, and giving us some of your insight and stuff like that as well. Um, you know what, people in the comments, let us know exactly what you think. And also, what would be good as well is let us know what other elephants in the room that we can, you know what I mean, discuss, like and subscribe and all of that. Gang, come on. Yeah. Honourable shout out to Desmond as well, yeah? Boom. Yeah, man, gang.